All truth is not kind to hear. There's a bitter truth as well as a sweet truth. Jesus said in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth. And there's one thing about the truth, it will make you free. And the first thing you need free is your mind. Shalom, 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 saints of the Most High, Yah, glory to the King. Talking about Yah, Jesus the Christ, our soon returning Savior. Blessings, greetings. My name is Elder Rufus. You're on the Blog Talk Radio broadcast here uh, with the Way Truth Ministry. Happy to have you with us. Um, let me get a sound check from you all in the chat room. I know during the playing of the theme song or whatever you want to call it, I heard a lot of breaking up and a lot of uh, static or whatever the case may be. Hallelujah. I'm seeing tens all across the board. Or Chris Dorman, I'm going to do something to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Blessings, saints. Glory to the king. Will Gomez and Buck. Well, Will, you know, that's just the snow. Why you got an eight, brother? You got like 76 inches of snow on top of your house, man. Ain't no way. I'm surprised you're getting reception right now, brother. Out there waiting in Buffalo, man, with all that crazy mess going on. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. All right. Blessings, saints. Blessings. Good to have you here. Good to see all of you. Um, Elder's excited. He's very excited, like always. Uh, There's been a lot going on in Israel. First and foremost, let me start off by apologizing to all the faithful Israelites, all that uh, desire to come and fellowship uh, on this Sunday night, Romans Sunday night, first day night broadcast. We call even though we're going in the second night. Um, I wanted to thank you all for coming last week, and I do apologize for the technical difficulties that we experienced um nothing that the elder could do about it um uh brother shane uh some of the other brethren were working uh feverishly trying to get the broadcast to come back up but blog talk was not working with um i'm not sure what happened i don't know how the problem got corrected but i'm on you can hear me and it looks like we got more than 15 minutes allotted to us this week so uh glory to the king um i thank the father for Foremost, and then I thank the brethren that worked um, hard to make sure that this weekly fellowship could go forward today. So uh, again, my apologies to all of those. I got all your messages, all your texts and emails, and all that. I got it all. Uh, some I could respond to, some I wasn't, but uh, I did get them. Thank you. I do. I was appreciative of the concern. Um, and if I could have got back on last week, I would have got back on, and we would have dealt with. The warning that the Most High Yah gave to us a couple Sabbaths ago. Uh, I'm sure that you faithful, beautiful, loving, caring, concerned, obedient, willing servants of the Most High Yah did your homework and went and read the scriptures that I put before you. Just in case those weren't with us last week. After the warning that came uh, through the gift of interpretations through tongues, uh, the Most High Yah gave warning as a nation, as Israel, and I gave homework to those saints to go and read Matthew 15, and I also gave them homework to go and read Isaiah 29. Now, hopefully you read those, and hopefully you came away with a little bit more understanding of what kind of behavior and attitude we as a body possess. And if you personally are lacking in one of these areas, um, hypocrisy, laziness, stubbornness, stiff-neckedness, any of that, I hope you've gone before the Father. I hope you went into your prayer closet. I pray that you have cried out to the Most High Yah to have mercy on your wicked soul so that you could be able to truly repent and turn from this way that's going to get you cut off from the kingdom. I'm talking about saints and the Most High Yah. Y'all listening to me? Hallelujah. All right. It's going to get intense here real quick, real fast, in a hurry because we're not playing. Did y'all hear that message yesterday from Pastor Dow? Did y'all hear that message that the Father 
delivered through the man of Yah. See, I was reading Jeremiah already. And then when Pastor Dow went to Jeremiah 7 yesterday, it rung out. I'm talking about like, like, like just, y'all know that joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Man, it was joy bells ringing to me yesterday. Joy bells. Okay. Because he was confirming all the things I had been reading. All the things that talked about how stiff necked we are as a people. All the things that how we have just flat out rejected. The Most High Yah, how we've been stick, stiff necked towards Him. See, we won't listen to the voice of Yahweh. And in turn, we are perishing because His truth is being cut off from us. Now, for those that actually give a flying flip, go to Jeremiah 7. Pastor gave it. Yes, you should have it in your notes. Go to Jeremiah 7. Read the whole chapter. But really get the verses 23 to 28. All right? It breaks it down. It breaks it down for you. The, the condition that Israel is in. And if you do any kind of soul searching, if you do any kind of uh, heart checking, like you're supposed to, you know, searching your heart. You will see that this is such an epistle that not only the warning that came through the gift of the interpretation of tongues two Sabbaths ago, just in case you don't remember, for some of you that are listening, it's in the chat room right now, so I'll read it for you. The warning was from the Most High Yah through the interpretation of tongues. You are my remnant. You are my chosen. But some of you walk in hypocrisy and you think I don't know it. You think I don't see it. You are selfish. You are spoiled. Turn my children. Your time is short. Message from the Most High Yah. Came on November 15th, two Sabbaths ago. All right. Then you get a diligent pastor who puts in all the labor. All right who puts in the labor, who comes up and warns us, especially us that are at these home of sin. Let me take you back a little bit, saints, just in case you realize what was going on. Let's go back a few months. Let's go back half a year, a year, when Pastor Dow did the same thing. He walked up on that video camera, and he pointed at it, and he said, I'm going to get you, Jezebel. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you, Jezebel. I'm going to get you. Y'all remember that? Chime in in the, in the chat room, those that's paying attention, that's actually listening, just don't have it up on your darn radio. Chime in and tell me if you remember that. Remember when Pastor told Jezebel he's going to get him? I'm looking for responses. I'm in the chat room. Okay, yes, sir, yes, sir. All right. Hallelujah. We remember that. Did y'all hear the warning that he gave yesterday to these people in these home assemblies? How many of y'all go to the home assemblies and fellowship? How many of y'all fucking and playing games with the most high y'all? How many of y'all know y'all souls is on the line? The pastor told y'all flat out you're about to be cut off. Y'all understand that this is a man of Yah, that he's not playing a game, that if he speaks it, it is something that the Most High put on his heart to say to his people. I can't say it more clear or more louder, Saint. I can't, I can't use more love than what's in my voice right now. I talk with Pastor today. I talk with my brother today. And I told him my knees were shaking. My knees were knocking. If I was back in Bible time, that's how they would have described it yesterday. Now, my heart was overjoyed because I want the will of the Father to go forth, y'all. I do. But my knees were knocking. Because Elder fully understands that people's souls are on the line. And because we will not listen nor hearken to the voice of the Most High Yah, what he has done is cut his truth off from us. We won't be able to receive it. It's perishing. And that's sad. That hurts. Because like most of you, we don't want to see a soul lost. We don't. We don't want to see a, a saint be lazy, lethargic, 
uh, 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 a procrastinating spirit towards going after spiritual things, not fully engaged in the spiritual warfare. This is not a war that you're going to be able to fight with carnal warfare, you guys. I don't care how many bullets you stock up. I don't care how many guns and AK-47s and AR-15s that you got. It ain't going to do you no good. Go to Psalms 91. See, go to Psalms 91 and read that. Go to Psalms 91. Pastor brought up yesterday. One of my favorite songs. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, Yah shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Y'all know it. I don't even have to go there. Y'all, y'all saints, y'all read the word. I don't even have to go there and read it for you. That's where you need to be. That is where you need to dwell in Psalms 91. If you don't have that level of peace in your life, you are in some trouble. Stockpile your guns. Stockpile your food. Get on your little island. Do all that you want to do. But I promise you this. It ain't going to mean a hill of beans to you. Because that's pretty much all you're going to end up having is a hill of beans. If you can spiritually get to the point where you can dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, where you can hide under his shadow and allow his shield and buckler to protect you. Go read Psalms 91. I'm giving out assignments. Yes, I am. Hallelujah. If you're serious about the Most High Yah, even though you done read these things a million times, when the man of Yah tell you to read it, go back and read it again. Why? Because the Father will give you new revelation from it. That's the only reason he tell you to do it. I don't know how many times I done read it. But every time it seems like I read it from the inspiration, yeah, I get something new from it. I get greater encouragement. Hallelujah. Yeah, I told you it was about to get intense, didn't I? Now, believe it or not, Elder's in a good mood. Elder's excited, y'all. I'm happy. But again, my knees are still knocking. The fear of the most high y'all went through me yesterday when I saw Pastor Dow walk up to that screen and he put that edict out there to us. That command. He told us, look, keep playing around all y'all in these home fellowships. You are going to be cut off. Now, go back again to when Pastor talked to Jezebel. That spirit, because he's addressing spirits. He ain't talking to saints. He's talking to the spirits that are controlling these saints and all ain'ts or whatever you want to call them. All right? Go back, though, when he spoke to the spirit of Jezebel. Who can name one individual that the that, that passed down and said, get the hell out of here. Don't come back. Can't come up with one, can you? Because it was the word. It was that sword. That two-edged sword that cut on both ends going in and rip you on both ends coming out. It's the divider. It's the word of Yah, saints. And what you think about to come forth now? The word has a peculiar way of putting holy pressure on you, especially when you stiff-necked, especially when a wicked and foul uh, 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 satanic spirit is controlling you. It's got a way of making you be so uncomfortable around the saints. You could be around a two-year-old. And they look at you and you think, oh, my God, they know. Oh, my God, it's in front of them. That's why they won't come to me. They won't give me a hug anymore. This is so sad. You need to get your act together. If you are out there in one of them home fellowships, you better get your act together. That was a serious warning coming from the man of Yah. If you are out there in one of these home fellowships, you need to get your act together. You need to be on board. You need to be diligently working towards community living. You need to be putting all your energy and resources and time and effort towards getting closer to Israel. You got people way out in the states of California and Washington and Hawaii and all this kind of stuff, Australia, saving, 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 trying to get close to the saints of the Most High Yah. Or some of us are already nestled in some of these home fellowships and do not appreciate where the Father has put us. He will remove you. He will remove you. One more time. He will. He is the Most High Yah. Remove you.
If that don't put the fear of Yah in you, nothing will. Nothing will. Now, yesterday, wasn't that a beautiful sermon? I mean, both of them. <laughs> the Torah portion and the fear to faith. I mean, I'm telling you, I got so much levels of clarity on some things yesterday. You know, how people are actually out in fear and not faith. I told Pastor, it blessed me. It blessed me immensely. And it's going to help me to walk in greater levels of love towards some people that got that understanding. Now, a lot of us got that understanding. So now we can go back to the drawing board. I was with a saint yesterday and, and, and you know, talked to him and, and they were asking, you know, man, I, I just sleep. I just sleep. Didn't sleep at all. <laughs> man, I had a lot of repenting to do. A lot of repenting. See, that's the attitude we got to have, saints. When this word hits, we realize it's right there at our door and it's knocking. It's knocking, saints. It's knocking like my old landlord, Mr. Garcia, used to knock when I was a young man. He used to come knocking at my door looking for his rent money when I didn't have it. He would just keep knocking like this, y'all. That's what that word is doing. It's knocking, it's knocking, it's knocking, it's knocking, it's knocking. We got to respond, though. We got to respond. And we got to respond by doing what the word in Jeremiah has told us to do. Turn. Turn, old backsliding children. You read all through Jeremiah 3. Uh, 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 you can get up to, to Jeremiah 7 with that. It's still telling you to turn. It's still telling you to turn from your wicked ways. Mm. Turn. Hallelujah, brother Darrell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glad. Yes, sir. Turn, saints. Old backslide. Y'all remember when I did that message on repenting? May want to go back and take a look at it. May want to. May want to go back and look at it again. It'd be a good time to go back and check it out. Not just because the elder said it, but the Most High Y'all anointed that message. And I'm telling you, for the hour that we're in now, it's a good message. I'm thinking about the words in Jeremiah that was in that message. And I'm thinking about the words of that song, how the Father speaks to us through song. What was Pastor talking about at the beginning of yesterday? He was talking about choir practice, and he broke it down in a, in a, in a uh, manner where you can understand it from a sports perspective. But he was talking about choir practice and the dedication that is necessary to go to it. Well, remember in that message I, taught, I talked about the songs that the Most High Yah uses to get to his people. The songs that Pastor Dial is inspired to make up for us, you guys, and the saints there on the land. What's the, what's the song of the hour for us now? Turn, old backsliding children. Turn. Yeah. Go back and listen to that message. I broke all that down. You know, from the time frame that we've been here in the ministry, the Father has had specific songs there for us to listen to. If we really listen to the message and the words of them songs, they're all scripture any darn way. And just do it. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. And, you know, we got a faithful. We do. We got a faithful, faithful group of saints. A lot of y'all in this room tonight. Glory to the king. Some of y'all still playing, though. All right. And I'm not going to shuck and jive you either. I'm not going to play with your souls and tour around with you. I'm not going to do it either. I love you too much. Some of y'all still playing around. And you know it. You know you're messing around. Get your act together, Saint. Get your act together. Now, I'm a brother. I'm an elder that loves you enough to tell you the truth. Don't get flip if I become your enemy either. I really don't. I love you enough to help you save your life. I love you more than you hate yourself. And these messages have to hit home here first before we can even deliver these things to you. So, again, my knees have been knocking all week. And I love it when I hear that saints are receiving it. I love it when saints are hitting their knees and they repent. And I love it when saints are jumping in their closets and crying out to the Father. I love it when these saints realize that this war ain't going nowhere. And I need to become fully engaged in it or I'm going to be totally consumed by the Satan. He comes but for one thing only, to steal, kill, and destroy. He's a murderer. 
He's a liar. He's a thief from the beginning. And I hate him. I hate him with a passion, y'all. I do. I hate the Satan. Now, I ain't foolish. I understand what he is. And I thank the Father that I'm on his side, on the Father's side. Because he can handle the Satan. Me as a mere mortal, I'm no match. But the name of Jesus, he will bow down. He will back off. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Man, bless y'all, saints. It is so good to see all y'all in here, brother. Michael, good to see you, brother. Hallelujah. Good to see you, my brother. Mm. Brother Ugly, can't wait to pass over, man. We miss you so much at Tabernacles, man. Mm. We miss you. Can't wait to see you, brother. Hallelujah. All you other faithful, love y'all. I do. Glad to see y'all. Glad that y'all came to fellowship with Elder uh, on this evening. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Yes, yeah, saints. You got a new assignment. Now, you're supposed to go and read the Matthew 15. You're supposed to go and read the Isaiah 29. I'm telling you now, you want to go back and listen to it on repentance. And you want to go back because it's got a lot of Jeremiah in there. And then you also want to read what Pastor gave yesterday. You should have all this stuff in your notes. But that's one of the main things that stuck out to me yesterday. One of the main things. I mean, I got, oh boy, let's see. I mean, I got two pages of notes here. Page and a half of scriptures here. Okay? And I always write down highlights, this and that, things that the Father hit my spirit with heavily. All right? And I wrote down real big, we won't listen. That's what I wrote, y'all. We won't listen when I was reading Jeremiah 7. We won't listen to the voice of Yahweh. So this truth is perishing right before us. And he's making it so that we will not be able to hear it. Now, the truth is going to keep going for you just going to be in the position where you ain't going to be able to listen to it. Jeremiah is thick, y'all. You need to get in that book. You need to get in it. I'm telling you. You need to get in it. Hallelujah. Most of this is self-inflicted, too. All self-inflicted wounds. All of it is. Mm, 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 mm. I got so much stuff here, y'all. It would take me, man, 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 man. I'd be doing a series on this little broadcast, just trying to go over the notes I done took from yesterday's sermon. So I ain't going to mess around with it no more. I done put it out there for you. All right? You got all this stuff to go over. The warning that the, that the Most High Yah gave us yesterday, I mean two week, two Sabbaths ago, then the warning from the man of Yah, he used the man of Yah to give a warning to the assemblies as a whole, especially y'all in home fellowships. Keep toying around and playing. Keep toying around and playing. Y'all know from feast to feast, y'all seen how lovely, how sweet it was to be at Tabernacles. It was just the greatest feast we've had. Greatest feast. That we've had to date. Y'all keep jacking around in these homes. I'm only going to make it to Passover. I mean literally not make it to Passover. Literally. Hallelujah. Glory to King. All right. Let me get over here. Ain't going to jack around. We got a couple callers. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh oh. Somebody. Saints. Somebody. Somebody beat bro Jr. <laughs> I see you, brother Junior, but somebody was in here first. Somebody beat you. I'm going to the phone line, Saints. Hey, if you got a question, you got a comment, um, you got um, a statement, a testimony, anything, give a call at 310 982 4226. The call in number is 310 982 4226. You're on the Blog Talk Radio. This is the Straightway Truth Ministry. You're on with Elder Rufus. I'm the elder here in Israel. Uh, I'm over the assembly here in Georgia. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. And uh, again, the call-in number if you want to speak to me, if you have a question, you got a comment, you got a statement about anything going on in Israel, anything we've been talking about the last few weeks, anything we're talking about, give a call to 310-982-4226. I'm going to the phone line, and we're going to start with area code 813. Area code 813. You're on the Straightway Truth Ministry broadcast here on Blog Talk Radio with Elder Rufus. How can I help you? Hey, Shalom, Elder Rufus. Shalom, Shalom. Bless you. Shalom. This um, I want to make myself known. This brother Carlos, JC's little brother. Oh, bless you, brother! First time I'm talking to yeah. you, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, how you doing? 
I'm doing very well, brother. I heard a lot about you, man. Glad you called in. You say, is it Tullus? Charlos. It's like Carlos oh, Car- with an H. Okay. Bless you, brother. Carlos, bless him. Bless Pleasure you, to meet you, you, brother. Bless you. Pleasure to meet you. Um, I just had a couple of questions on okay. a couple of Torahs. Can I go over with you real fast? Sure. Okay, right I want to start it with, um, I'm sorry? Go right ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I want to go over through the Deuteronomy 7, verse 25 through 26. It says, The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it into thee, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. And it says in verse 26, Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thy house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it, but thou shalt surely detest it, and thou shalt early abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Now, what I got, my understanding on it is, the graven images that, like, be on people, that they have, like, you know, like, silver and gold, as in earrings, chains, necklaces, um, rings, etc. That's supposed to be, like, a cursed thing to us as a people. And these supposed to be, like, imitations of images of gods. Is that correct? You're accurate that they're that they're strange gods. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And was um and these things like if that people be wearing stuff, if we bring these things to our house, is that supposed that's supposed to be a Christian thing to us, isn't it? Elder Rufus? Correct. Correct. What's okay, going okay, on, brother? Okay. What what you're dealing with here is, you know, uh this is a situation where we're going these Canaanites were being annihilated, right? And they are full of idolatry. They love their gods. They love the worship of other gods. And all these trinkets and stuff, you know, they would lace them with gold, silver, all kind of things that were valuable, but it would be dedicated to their gods. Nothing's changed today. We got a lot of this jewelry. We got a lot of this stuff like this that's being made that's still being dedicated to gods today. And it's strange gods is what it is. So that's why you don't see real true Israelites wearing jewelry. That's why you don't see real Israelites doing this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Having these things up in their house. You know. Yes, and you know, you keep reading further and this stuff, you know, buzz will burn this stuff up, brother. Not that anyone else could get to it either. You you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir, yes, sir. So that's what's taking place here. The the warning of the father of how we're supposed to deal with these things because, you know, some of us would want to take this stuff and do something different with it. You know what I'm saying? Because there's gold involved and silver involved and things of that magnitude. But these are strange gods, and these things are being offered up to these idols. So these things are supposed to be destroyed. Is that making sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. And I had a um, I want to go to Romney again. It was in chapter 11, verse 25 through 28. I just wanted some understanding on that. Also, it says, just give me a second. I'll be right there. Okay, I got it. It says, There shall be no man able to stand before you, for the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon, as he has said unto you. And it says, Behold, I have set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you his, this, this, command you this day, and a curse, if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which you have not known. Now, from what I got understanding of that is, if you obey the Most High, that's where the blessings come in. But if you disobey Him, that's when the curses come in as you serving other gods. And I look at that as like in people today. Like, it's people that's disobedient and don't keep the commandments. They're not obedient to it, and they serve other gods that they have not known. Like, Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, you know, just different holidays and stuff. And I look at that, I look at that as these commandments are supposed to help us protect us from serving these other gods by us being obedient to this word to help us protect us from situations like this. 
You are accurate. You're accurate, brother. That's 100% correct. Okay, okay. Um, and, okay, what else? I have one more thing. Oh, the roof is down. Okay, go over. Just one go right ahead, brother. Go right ahead. Okay, thank you. I wanted, I really didn't get understanding on this one. Oh, I didn't really get this one, but it said in Deuteronomy 12, verse 10 through 15, it says, But when you go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God gives you to inherit, and when he gives you rest from all your enemies round about, so that you dwell in safely, then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. To there shall ye bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your titties, I think, something like that. The heat and the heat offerings of your hand and all your choice vows which ye vow unto the Lord. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God, ye and your sons and your daughters and your man servants and your maid servants and the Levite that is within your gates. For as much as he have no part nor inheritance with you, take heed to yourself that thou offer not thy burnt offerings in every place that thou seest, but in the place which the Lord shall choose in one of thy tribes, there thou shalt offer thy burnt offering, and there thou shalt do all thy command thee. Notwithstanding, thou mayest kill and eat flesh in all thy gates. Whatsoever thy soul lusted after, according to the blessings of the Lord thy God, which he had given thee. The unclean and the clean may eat thereof as the roebuck and as the heart. And I was trying to get understanding is for, for the blessing that they have, was they able to eat unclean for that moment at time for the, um, the place the Most High was supposed to choose for them? No, brother, it's, it's, a, it's a lot deeper than that, and it's not giving you, like, a command or, or permission to go and eat unclean foods. That's not what it's talking okay. about, right? That's not what it's talking about. Um, I actually think it would take me too long on this broadcast to explain it to you. Um, I talk a lot with your brother, so uh, what I'll do is I'll get your brother's number, and I'll, I'll get with you personally on that. And I'll give you some okay. understanding, but no, I've actually remember talking about this uh, a few other times with a few other brothers, and it kind of confused them a little bit on what's going on. Got to understand what's taking place here is some promises from the Father as you are going into the Promised Land. Actually, I gave a uh, thing telling everybody to go back and look at the message that I did. I actually hinted on this and talked about this just a tad bit in that message. I really did. So it'll bless you to go back and listen to my repentance message. And it talks a little bit about what you just brought up here, about the name being chosen of the place. You know what I mean? That the father has ordained. Um, it, it, again, it's, it's, a, it's a lot deeper and it would probably take me too long on this broadcast to explain it all to you. So uh, I'll get with you personally through your brother. But no, that's not giving you permission to go out and eat unclean food, brother. It's not giving you permission. Is that the part that had you a little confused? Yeah, I was just I was just seeing like just for that moment I thought I didn't think that we could eat a confused, but at that moment I think I thought that he gave Israel a pass just for that at that time just to eat whatever they so listed at at that time. And I was just trying to make sure was was it just specifically for this time? No, no, that's not what's taking place. That would be a contradiction to the command of the Most High Yah, and it would be. Um, him contradicting, if he did that, what you're thinking, it would be him contradicting his food laws. And that's not what he's doing. He's definitely not doing that. So Okay, all right. All right. Thank you. I Thank need, you, Edward, Edward Rufus. Thank you. Yeah. It's actually talking about people here, brother, but again it's a it's a it's deeper. It's a lot deeper than that. And again, I I think I even covered this maybe with your brother. I know I talked with him about it at one point. It's actually talking about people because if you look there uh, you got like you said, it says thy God, which he in verse 15, he hath given thee. Then you see the semicolon. All right. So that's a separation. So we're going into something yeah. different. Then it's saying the unclean people, the clean may eat thereof. 
It's talking about people, actually. You know what I mean? But it's oh, a little okay. deeper, too. All it's right. a little deeper. You, you get that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Just wanted to, I mean, it, again, it is, it's a little bit deeper. I remember breaking this down for a couple of brothers a, a little bit a while ago. And I think your brother was one of them, actually. It may not have been, but I know I, I talked, I'm pretty sure he was one. But uh, that definitely not giving us permission to eat unclean foods. Definitely not doing that at any time. Right. Father would never give us permission to eat unclean foods. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Brother, I appreciate Bless you calling. You. you got anything else? No, I think that's you. You helped me out a lot, Elder. Um, I got the stuff that you was talking about the um, Psalms twenty, not not Psalms ninety one, and your repentance yes, video, and then Matthew fifteen and Isaiah twenty nine. So, you know, I got some work to do. I mean, that's all I needed, Elder. Bless Lord you. Glory to the King. Bless you, brother. Thanks for calling in. Bless you. Shalom. Shalom. That was old uh, brother JC's little brother. Hallelujah. I know me and him have done a little talking, about and young man has come in and. Hit the grounds, 100 miles and running, and I thank the Father for it. So uh, hopefully we got a little bit of clarity on that, Saints. I know I, I, I just remember having a couple conversations a while ago with a bunch of the brother in, in the faith um, about that. And the way they looked at that, they thought that the, that the book was telling them that at some point they could eat unclean. No, unclean people, unclean, uh, clean and unclean people is what that's talking about. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Bless the most high. But he also talked a little bit about, if you read the first part of that, about uh, where the father has put his name and placed his name on and the blessing that's on that. Um, I talked about that. If you go back and look at my repentance message, I talked about that because no doubt in this hour, in this day, the father has blessed and put his name and his stamp of approval on a place called Straightway. All right. And that's in that message. So uh, those that care, go back and take a look at it and you'll get some clarity and some understanding on it. Hallelujah. Glory to King. All right, let's go to the next caller. That should be Brother Junior. Code 347, Erico 347. You're on the Straightway Truth Ministry broadcast here on Blog Talk Radio with Elder Rufus. How can I help you? Well, Elder Rufus, the phone. Bless you, Brother phone, Junior. No, mess up. Bless you, Brother phone, Junior. How you doing? Dropped. I'm good. I'm fine. The phone dropped. I'm doing good. I'm doing good, right. man. I feel great, man. Delivered yesterday, man. I got deliverance, man. I feel great. I feel better. But before I already eat, got the food out tomorrow. I'm saying I feel, I feel set free. I feel, I feel set free. I feel, I feel that great. I feel great. I feel stronger. I'm saying I feel stronger. You know what I'm saying, man? I ain't playing games. I'm not playing games. I'm serious. I'm serious, man. I'm serious. I like the part about the um. There's a lot of parts I like in the message, but it's, it's so much. But it's so much. But you know, it's so it, it, it's beautiful. I like the um the commitment part. The commitment part I like about that. I like I like that, and I like the um the cut off part. You know, like Saints name. That's Saints who playing. But I ain't playing. It's just getting deeper. I ain't playing. I mean, let so me sure that you know what I'm saying. Uh, repent. You know what I'm saying. You know. We going to deepen this debt season. I think I'm going to deepen this debt season. Very deep. Very deep. Going very deep. This is debt season. Very deep. Middle. You going to talk the middle. Deep in the middle of debt season. See, we got yes, a lot sir. of purging. Got a lot of purging. A lot of purging and purging. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's serious. It's serious. Trying to make you know, stay, stay in the way. Stay in the fight best I can. Stay with the saints, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I ain't going to be falling away. I don't want to fall away. I don't want to fall away. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to fall away. I don't. I don't. No. It's no way. It's nothing to go back to. Nothing to go back to. Nothing. Zero. Want to go back to lies? <laughs> Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> you got nothing to go back to, bro. Nothing. <laughs> Birthdays? <laughs> you going back to that garbage? I ain't going back to that. No. <laughs> Same garbage, all and all and all. It's, it's boring. That's boring. This way, this way, is no boring. I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I mean, Elder? I'll get you, brother. Yes, sir. Father set me free. Down, going back. Do that. Oh, <laughs> I ain't going. I ain't going back to that, man. Nothing to go back to, bro. 
Nothing to go back to at all. <laughs> Y'all had good fellowship down there in Jersey yesterday, Brother Junior? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes, great. Beautiful ever. Ever. Best ever. Great worship. Um, service is awesome, of course. Awesome. Always awesome. And the limit is awesome, too. And the dinner is awesome, too. Man, I got set free. I got set free. I got set free, man. Set free. I got set free. Different. I feel like I feel more energy. I feel happy. I feel free. You know what I'm saying? I can't understand people. This way, you see all the miracles, all the, it go back to their thing. I, I just can't understand it. I just can't understand it. Mm-mm. No. No. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. And I go back to <laughs> This is my home. This, this is it for me. Ain't nothing go back. It's, it's whack out there. It's whack. Same garbage all over and over and over and over and over again. And I was like, <laughs> Man, no man. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to you, King. Thank you, Father. I thank you for setting me free. Thank you so much. You know what I'm saying? I mean. Yes, sir. Bless you, Elder. Thank you for the talk. Bless you, brother. Bless you. That's all you got for? Thank you for the message, Elder. Huh? That's all you got for, brother, Junior? Oh, yeah. That's it. That's I it. I mean, man. bro. That's it. Well, bless you, brother. Bless you. Stay encouraged. Stay alone. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Hallelujah. Lord. Fellowship down there in New Jersey with Brother Junior. Getting it done. Getting that some deliverance. Setting some brothers free. Hallelujah. Yeah, we ain't got nothing to go back to. Hey, I got a couple texts from a couple brothers that, that want a little bit more clarity on what uh, Brother Halios, uh, uh, Carlos uh, had talked about. Let's just go back real quick and look at that, Saints. All right? We're we over here in Deuteronomy. We're at Deuteronomy 12. And I think I can clear it up just by reading verse 15. Let's see. All right. It says, uh, Notwithstanding, thou mayest kill and eat flesh in all thy gates, whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, according to the blessings of Yahweh thy Elohim, he hath given thee. The unclean and the clean. Now, he's talking about people. And the reason he's talking about people, see, back then in the Old Testament, remember, you got a lot of folk, remember, they're going in two. They're going into the promised land here. They're going into a land that the Father has promised them. So you got people that are joining up with them. You understand what I'm saying? So some of these people that have joined up with them will be considered the unclean. The Israelites themselves will be considered the clean. And he's telling them that the unclean and the clean, all right, they may eat thereof. That's what that is saying. It's talking about people. Now, some of us know if you move over to the New Testament and you get to the Acts, I believe it's Acts 10, and you start looking at the story about the Cornelius and uh, how the Father gave him the vision, and then he put the uh, Peter in a trance. Remember what Peter was saying when he showed him the animals? He was saying that it's I'm never un- I've never eaten anything unclean. The Father said, "Kill, rise, kill, and eat." And Peter was like, "I've never eaten anything unclean." Well, we all know from that account, the Father wasn't talking to Peter about animals. He was talking to Peter about people because they used to call the people on the outside like that unclean or common. That's another word that they used for our English words. Of course, they were different words back then, but that's what they used for. Them. That's what this account in the scriptures is talking about. They used to equate the people that were not Israelites as unclean. And remember, a lot of folk joined up with the Israelites. OK, so that's what the father is talking about. Hopefully we got some clarity on that. If not, we, we, we can go a little deeper if we have to. But I think that should clear it up. That's what that is talking about. And again, if you go back and look at that semicolon there, that's separating that sentence. So the father is saying he's identifying the unclean, which were the people, the strangers that joined on to the Israelites and then to the freeborn Israelites. They were the clean people. Hopefully that makes sense for you guys. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Bless the most high. Yah. All right. Let's go. Let's go. We got more, a couple more phone calls in here. Let's move forward. Again, if you got a question, comment, statement, give a call at 310-982-4226, 310-982-4226. That is the call-in number. Once you get in the caller queue, if you have a question or something, you got a comment, go ahead and hit the number one, and that will give me an indication that you want to speak to me. All right, let's go to area code 951. Area code 951, you're on the Blog Talk Radio broadcast here on the Straightway Truth Ministry with Elder Rufus. How can I help you? 
Shalom, Elder. Shalom, Saint of the Most High. Oh, bless you, brother. Bless you, brother Chris. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Uh, I don't know if you got my text message, Elder, but uh, <laughs> in the shows, um, when, uh, you know, the 9.92, yeah, that would be, I'm the culprit, so. Yeah, I know you always call it, brother what? Chris Dorman. I said, I, yeah, I, I, I think... I'd be the culprit. I'm the one. <laughs> Go ahead, Elder. No, I saw that. It was under, that's Chris Dorman, ain't it? No, 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 no. Chris Dorman is in the room as Christopher Dorman. Brother Chris D is me. Oh, my bad. So I'm the one putting the nine point nine through. <laughs> yeah. Chris Dorman like, what I do, Elder? What I do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you bless yes, you, brother. Sir, How you yes, doing? Sir. I am doing good, Elder. I am doing good. I want to be honest. I have not been able to take notes on these teachings for the past two months. You know, I come in there like a good student with my notebook and, you know, my pen and, you know, my highlighters, and I'm ready. And as soon as pastor starts teaching, I just throw it all down the ground. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to sit here and listen because, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I just can't take these notes, you know, because when he be hitting on things, you know, I feel it. You know, I, you know, the, the writing and the, the listening don't correspond at the same time. You know, so I, I know I do get the opportunity to finally take some notes, but that's usually, you know, in my personal time when I re-listen to the teachings again in the mornings, you know, I can sit down and take some notes. So I would love to say I'm taking notes too, but Elder, don't, he, his teachings, I have just been on fire, Elder, on fire. You know, I'm a very animated person, so when he's teaching, you know, I'm jumping up and, and clapping my hands, you know. And I'm just like, man, you know, he hits right home with everything that that uh he's been saying and you know if if you a saint if you a saint of the mosai and you ain't feeling his teachings you're not feeling that that oof you know like like you got punched by mike tyson then you know you need to check your spirit because my goodness elder oh my goodness you know it's true man of y'all true man of y'all and i'm thankful for that no um, doubt about it, brother. no doubt about it other than that I, I don't have much else oh i wanted to tell pastor thank you for the correction um for those of you who heard my uh, Friday blog talk call, and he gave me some correction, I thank the Most High for the correction. And, you know, especially because if I have an a improper understanding of something, you know, and, you know, I, I would rather be correct. I mean, the, the, the Bible says that the you know, Yah uh, chastens those whom he loves. So when you get corrected, that's an opportunity to get it right. The problem arises, and you know you need to really check yourself when you do something wrong and there ain't no correction. Mm-hmm. When you do something wrong and, and you ain't hearing nothing, you know, I remember playing on, um, I played, you know, I played uh, college basketball. And uh, my first year in college, you know, when you're a you know, scholarship player and you're kind of nervous about, you know, doing things and, and uh, coach calls your name, you know you're in trouble. You know you're in trouble because the freshmen always come in and they get their butts kicked. But, you know, when, when, if you're a guy walking onto the team and coach don't call your name, that lets you know you're about to be cut. That lets you know you're about to, you know, my sophomore, junior, and senior year, I was a captain, so I didn't have to worry about that no more. But my freshman year when I went in there, you know, coach is calling your name, you know, and you have that feeling like, oh, my gosh, I can't do nothing right. I'm trying. And, just, you know, it ain't happening. And coach finally pulled me off the side and said, listen, if I don't call your name, that's when you know you <laughs> you about to get cut. <laughs> you ain't about to make the final roster. You know, you know, that ain't nobody paying attention to you. You know, and I thought, you know, not unless your brother Daryl, you know, he gets his name called five, six times each service. You know, but <laughs> 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 I look at brother Daryl. I'm like, bless my brother, bless you, brother Daryl. I look at you like, man, punching bag. That is the that's the brother wants the hot seat. <laughs> But other than that, Elder, I don't have much. Bless you, Saints. Bless you, Saints. I love y'all. Love you too, brother. Bless you, Shalom. Thanks for calling, bro. Bless you. Olive. Yes, sir. A beloved brother out there in California holding it down. Looking forward to uh, actually being able to see him uh, for the first time. Passover. Pastor uh, announced that a few weeks ago. He's going to fly that family out, that faithful family out, so they can actually uh, set feet on the ground and see their family. Uh, for the first time, uh, they met Pastor. He was out there in California for, um, uh, he went out there to minister, so they got to meet him. But they've never been to Straightway. So uh, it's a beautiful thing that we're going to get an opportunity to meet and uh, greet our brother and our sister and the family. All right? Glory to the King. All right. They got more calls. going to keep rolling with the phone calls. All right? Uh, we're going to go to area code 856. Area code 856. You're on a Blog Talk Radio broadcast here on Straightway Truth Ministries with Elder Rufus. How can I help you? 
Shalom now, this brother Ron. Calling brother in. Ron from New Jersey. I thought that's who it was. Bless you, brother. Yes, sir. Bless you, bless you. I just want to say thank the Most High, first and foremost, for these teachings. Cause they some strong teachings. Uh, they some strong teachings. But uh, what matters the most about that is what fruit comes from it. So that's definitely what what to look forward to is that fruit that comes next. But um, I'm glad uh, I'm glad Brother Chris brought what he said up about that correction. Cause Pastor touched on something, something uh, something important. How he how he broke down. Um, you know, the most high mocked in the day of your calamity if you give more place in them spirits and you let them spirits rule. And uh, how you said uh, it takes um, it takes the same amount of energy to serve fear and to serve, uh, as it does faith. And to um, you can actually be serving the Father in fear rather than serving Him in faith. You know, there's a lot of things that He touched on yesterday, and it's it's really amazing. You know, you think you you think you got a little bit of understanding. On the spirit, but the father, man, he he just pours it out. He pours it out. The pastor just coming through with so many different angles on the spirit of fear, and you know, all these uh, man, he's just doing he's just doing a spectacular job feeding us. But um, I hope all you Israel just keeps your ears glued and keep your eyes glued on your pastor and on your elders. Continue listen, lifting them up in prayer and staying obedient, and we'll make it to the kingdom. That's all we got to do is. All the authority sets up, and we'll get there. No doubt about it. Hallelujah. Lord the King. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. I'm doing real good, out I'm doing real good. I mean, sitting here eating I mean. this, eating this doing, taking my time eating it because, like, <laughs> man, you talk about a lot of food. One of these teachers, that's a lot of food. Sitting yeah. there and, and sitting there and digesting them and then di- digesting the teachings coming across on a uh, blog talk. You talk about a uh, like Pastor would say a smorgasbord. You know, it's, it's a lot of food coming across and you really don't need to get nothing from nowhere else. You know, if you listen the straight way and you truly uh, you truly part of the family, that's all you need because there's so much food there. You don't need nothing else. You know, but I'm doing good, doing good, taking it day by day. Getting that pace, keeping that pace steady, and the faith of moving. I mean, I mean, well, bless you, brother. You got anything else for us? No, nah, that's it, out. I just wanted to call in and speak to you for a second, but bless you. Bless Straightway George over there. Stay strong. Love y'all all. Love you too, my brother. Bless you. Bless you. Long. That's my brother, Ron, from New Jersey. Brother, good brother in the faith, faithful brother. Hallelujah. All right, let's keep it rolling. We got caller from area code 614. Area code 614. Area code 614. You on the Straightway Truth Ministry broadcast here on Blog Talk Radio with Elder Rufus. How can I help you? Great peace have they which love thy law. <laughs> and nothing's going to offend them. Nothing. Hallelujah. Bless you, brother. Bless you, Elder. I love you, brother. Uh, you know, I'm singing another song today. All this, like Brother Ron was saying, all this we getting fed. I can't stop praising his name. I'm so thankful. It's a lot, and I sure am thankful. Uh, oh, I'm singing today, Elder. I'm praising today. Hebrews 13, verse 17. Obey them that have a rule over you, for they watch for your soul. That's why I love you, brother. That's a big reason. That's a good reason. Too, yes, I actually, my wife, my wife had to tell me about your song the other day, man. I actually dozed off for a hot second and I missed it. Our elder was a little tired because uh, I worked twelve hours a night before and then we traveled, you know, and I had not been to sleep. So uh, I actually dozed off, but my wife said, "Man, hey, 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 hey brother, brother had a song." <laughs> she told me about. Oh, that- that was a different one yesterday. Yeah, I know. I You're talking different just, one today. They just come. They just come and they go, and I just praise, and I'm so thankful. But uh, you was tired, Elder. Huh? You getting you some rest? I am, brother. You know, I got away, and that night I was able to get some rest, and the next night, uh, last night, I was able to get some rest. I, I am. I'm, I'm actually resting more now uh uh well, than I was good. before. So I thank the Father for it. I am getting a little bit more rest. This is a short week, you know, these these uh Gentiles gonna be 
slicing and dicing it up with the turkey and dressing and the hams and hogs and all, brother, you know, and, and celebrating they massacring our, our, our brethren, you know what I'm saying? So uh, we're going to get a few <laughs> days extra off this week so they can celebrate, okay. you know, uh, their heathenisms and uh, their murderous spirits. So, but, you know, we give the glory to the Most High Yah. He got, he got a, a recompense and a reward for these bullets. Um when we get to that valley, you know what I'm saying. So, uh, yes, sir. Well, I, that. I, I so I will. Go ahead, brother. Mike. I appreciate your commitment and your sacrifice. It why do me good to hear you getting some rest. Uh, a lot of people don't know what you have sacrificed, and I've learned a little bit more by you know hanging around with you and other people speaking highly of you. I mean, um, you could have went on. You you could have pursued a basketball career here in the United States, or you could have went on even after that and pursued in in Canada, uh, but you didn't. Uh, you could be coaching now, but you're not. Uh, 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 you were in, in sales and financing at a time uh, looking at six figures. You gave it up to do what you're doing now, and that's why I obey them that have a rule over you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. But what, what brought me... What brought me to that, brother, is uh, uh, Elder Spinney had admonished me to read something, and he said to take your time and read slowly. And in reading that, uh, in between that, I was catching up on my videos, and Elder Austin put out some 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 good some good food for us in one of his videos that was titled "Sneaking Out the Back Door." Yeah. And as I was reading Romans, I wanted to, I wanted to read a little bit from the uh, Hallelujah Scriptures, and then I'm going to jump over to the King James. It's in chapter 9, and it just made me think about that brother. And I've really never gotten to talk to Elder Austin that much, but, but I do love him. And, and, and this yeah. word here, uh, it says, I'm going to start 915, for he says to Moshe, I shall favor whomever I favor, and I shall have compassion on whomever I have compassion. So then it is not of him who is wanting, nor of him who is running, but of Elohim who shows favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. And he showed favor that Elder Austin, at the age of 26, two years older than my oldest child, is my elder. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lord. Yeah. And, and then couldn't you have a better 13, wrong, sir. And you couldn't have a better elder. That's a solid young young brother in the faith. It ain't they don't get much yeah. better than that, bro. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of people around him at the last meeting, so I didn't want to jump in, but you know, I sat back. But I'm going to the front of the line this time because I've never really gotten to hang out with Elder Austin and <laughs> talk with him and listen Hallelujah. to what he had to say. So I'm, I'm on the front of the line. If I ditch somebody, you know, <laughs> hey, Brother Mike paid his dues. But but to finish that off, that was out of the Hallelujah, Hallelujah Scripture. And when we go to uh, uh, that same chapter in Romans in the King James, I'm going to start in, in, in chapter 13, but I'm going to read 3 and 4. And it says, For the rulers are not a terror, to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Amen. For he is the minister of Yahweh to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not a sword in vain, but he is the minister of Yahweh, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, yeah. We just wish that yeah. all the saints could understand and get a revelation of scriptures and passages in the Bible, uh, in the New Testament, Old Testament, whatever you want to call it. You know what I'm saying? That they would get yes, this understanding, yes. so we could walk in the order in the Most High Yah and get that balance that we need. Grow and mature. That this is what you're talking about here. Walking in that, brother, it means that you are maturing in the Most High Yah. 
and you're understanding the things that the Father's putting before you. So you're giving reverence to where reverence is due. You're giving respect and honor to where respect and honor is due. Why? Because it's the Most High. Yah is the one that sent out this grace and this mercy. He's the one that's showing this compassion. He is the one that chose this man of Yah. You know what I mean? So, Hallelujah. It, 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 but it, I have a it, question, it, Elder Austin. Go ahead, brother. Now, is this Yah's government on earth? His Pastor, government is going to be the same. Elders, yeah. Brother. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. All it's right. Definitely. I'm back on definitely. fire. Obey them. <laughs> they have a rule over you. For they watch for your soul. You feel me, elders? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. All right. All right. Bless you, brother, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Bless you, elder. I got some more traveling to do tonight, so... I'm going to be listening to your message, your Sabbath message that you preached a while back. And that, that message is good for 200 miles. Did I tell you that? When I, I put it on. When you end, <laughs> I'm 200 miles away from where I, I uh, started. Man, so man, man. I usually look at where I, I got to travel, and then I say, oh, okay. <laughs> Brother, you said one or two things right there. Either I went really long or you driving really fast, one or the other, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You did say, I won't be here long. I won't be with you. I won't be. How'd you put that? I won't be before you long. Well, that was 200 yeah. miles, though. Oh, well, bless, boy, you, boy. <laughs> bless you. Bless you. Bro, oh, can I say one more thing? Can I say one more thing? Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. I want to I wanna, I wanna thank Brother Scott uh, for his, his, his diligence, his laboring in the Word, his, 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 his uh, you know, being up under the elders. And and he led my deliverance when I was delivered from that spirit of bitterness. And Brother Brett assisted him. And I just want to tell him I love him again. I love him, and I do appreciate him, and I look forward to seeing him again. And uh, I don't think the Saints realize, I love Elder Becker, but something he does every broadcast is he's, he's in the sound room uh, uh, working the console, which looks like, uh, like something in a space shuttle. I mean, buttons, lights, gizmos everywhere. And he has a job that probably would should really take about three or four people to do, and I'll explain that real briefly. Is He's mixing the sound for the stage, and I know I play too loud. He doesn't have control over the drums when I play, and I play too loud. I'm going to stop doing that. But what he has to do is compensate for the singers so they can hear themselves sing and the sound. You've been up there, Elder. So not only oh, yeah. is he mixing that sound, not only is he mixing that, he's mixing for the house, which would be the tabernacle where the four-inch chairs are. He's mixing for that room. And then he's also mixing for the broadcast. Man, I wouldn't want that job. But mm. I just want to thank Elder Becker for, for, for doing that. I mean, that that is a job. I mean, hallelujah. Yes, I'm, sure he listen, I'm sure he's appreciative. Bless that. Elder Beck. Yeah, no doubt. That's my brother. I love him dearly. Bless you, brother Mike. Yes, we appreciate you, brother. Stay encouraged. Be safe Bless out there, brother. Be safe. I'm about to sing another song. Take care. Bless you. Bless you. My brother. Hallelujah. That is our beloved brother Mike. Hallelujah. Yeah, my wife had told me about uh, his little song he had made. And uh, <laughs> well, Mike, a funny brother, but... Good brother, though, man. Good brother. Love the father, man, and just a good brother. Yeah, brother uh, Scott, I heard about you, brother. I heard about uh, them deer you were bagging, brother. Hallelujah. Man, that's some good eats right there, brother. Bro, Scott bagged three deer today, y'all. Hallelujah. Hope I wasn't, I hope I wasn't, hope that wasn't no secret thing, y'all, but if it was, I'm in trouble. But uh, I was excited when I heard the news. I said, what? Went out with Elder Becker hunting and bagged three deers today. Glory to the king. Yeah, yeah, we need more men like that in Israel. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Let me uh, go back over here. Bless the Most High. All right, Saints, that's it. That's it. We don't have any more callers in the caller queue. Um, Elder got to go to work, too. I forgot they got me coming in a little bit earlier. So, uh, Elder, love you all. Bless you all. Um, Stay diligent, Saints. Stay diligent, all right? Don't, um, Don't get caught up. You know, these these messages, this sword going forth, it's, it's for our edification. It's for us to grow as Israel. 
It's for us to get closer to the Most High Yah. It's for us to grow in love and grace with our brothers and learn how to truly uh, walk with them. You know what I mean? And so don't get offended. Don't walk in any level of offense. Don't take it personal. The Most High Yah just want to save your soul. That's all he wants to do. That's all Pastor Dow cares about. That's all the elders care about. That's it. We just want you to make it into the kingdom. Because we already know. You know, our minds are made up. You, you know what I'm saying? You know, ain't no wavering, ain't no flipping and flopping on our end. I have nothing else to go back to. And even if I did, I still wouldn't go. I still wouldn't go. I had one request of the Most High Yah when I made those decisions uh, years ago to follow him. And all it was was that I want to be with him because I understood being with his people that I would be with him. I knew that they came as a package deal. Show me your people. And I knew I would see him. I did. And he did it, and I'm grateful. So he has given me everything I have ever asked for. I'm a content man. I got food. I got raiment. And half the time, I don't even care if I have that. I really don't. I don't even care. I'm just glad to be amongst the number. I'm glad to have my name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Hey, uh, that'll love y'all. He truly do. And uh, we'll be back on here next week, same time. Uh, same everything. So uh, stay encouraged, saints. Uh, get that word in. Uh, go back over that message uh, that um, Pastor just preached. Really, the last two. I mean, all of them. But really, you know, keep it fresh in your hearts. Keep it fresh in your mind. Go over uh, the faith and the fear message again, so that you can get a real clear understanding, a clear cut understanding. Sure, you're not walking in any levels of fear like Job was, but you're walking in high levels of faith like uh, the emissaries were. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Bless y'all, saints. Ella, love you. Uh, be encouraged. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Uh-oh. Look at him looking. <laughs>